Okay, let's go ahead and continue with our discussion with operations with vectors. And we finished up addition, so we have that in place. And what we're going to take a look at now is what scalar multiplication looks like. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at scalar multiplication. Now, let's just take a look at a very simple example here of taking two vectors which are exactly the same, and let's call those vectors A and vector A. Adding those two vectors together, and what are you going to be coming out with? Now, just from an algebraic standpoint, if we had gone ahead and assumed that these were variables, then you would come out with x plus x, that's 2x. And we can actually go ahead and do the same thing with vectors and say that the addition of a plus a is actually going to be the vector 2a, where this 2 is actually going to be the scalar that is being multiplied to the vector a. So that's the reason why we call it scalar multiplication. Okay, so notice that with scalar multiplication, basically what we're doing is we're just multiplying a scalar to the vector, and of course the result of that is again a vector. Now, what we need to do then is if we know that scalar multiplication is just going to be some scalar k multiplied to a given vector a, we need to go ahead and investigate what happens for different values of k. Now let's say for example that this is what our original vector a is going to be, and let's think about the different possible values of k that you could have. Now k could be negative, k could be zero, k could be positive, and those are basically the gamut of all the different numbers that we have. Now, the other thing that we want to do is we want to get a little bit more in depth with, say, for example, for the values that are greater than 0, what happens between 0 and 1 when k associates itself with those values, and what's going to happen when k is greater than 1. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's say, for example, that k is equal to negative 1. Well, we've investigated this in class, and we know that this is going to be a vector that has the same direction, uh, sorry, the same magnitude, but the exact opposite direction. Okay, so and that's what you would come up with there. Now, if we say that k is equal to zero, then notice what we come up with is we come up with the zero vector. Now, be careful. What we said before is that the product, or, or sorry, the result of scalar multiplication is another vector. So even if k is equal to zero, and you put zero times by the a vector. That doesn't give you zero because that is a scalar. We need to come up with a vector quantity and therefore we call it the zero vector. And that's what it looks like right there. It has no magnitude and the direction is anything that you want it to be. Okay? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, values for k is greater than zero and we said that we're going to break this up. Notice that when k is equal to one half, then of course the length or the magnitude of the vector is going to be half as long. If we go ahead and say that k is greater than 1, let's say for example k is equal to 2, then we know that this is going to be 2 times the vector a, and therefore you have 2a. Okay, and so that's basically what that's represented by there. So, we know now exactly what scalar multiplication is going to be doing. It is going to be affecting the magnitude as well as the direction but the direction is only going to have two possibilities. It is either going to be moving in the same direction or in the exact opposite direction. And that's it. Okay. So let's go ahead then and take a look at one other thing that we need to go ahead and, and uh, investigate. And this doesn't necessarily have to do with the operations, but it has to do more with the way that we represent vectors. So we're introducing another piece of notation to help us with all of these operations that we do on vectors. And this is going to be called the component form of a vector. Now before we get to the component form of a vector, we need to go ahead and establish what the basis vectors are. Now if you want to go ahead and talk about what the basis vectors actually represent, let's look at an analogous case and talk about the English language. All the words that you have are all based upon the letters so in that sense, the letters are actually the basis of the English language and any type of words that you want to create and any meaning behind them. In the same respect, if we go ahead and take a look at math, you can go ahead and establish basis vectors which will then be used to go ahead and express any other vector in terms of those basis vectors. 
So let's go ahead and think about what those basis vectors are. And remember that we said that whenever you talk about vectors, you need to talk about what the magnitude is and what the direction is. So let's go ahead and establish those for the two basis vectors that we have in two-dimensional space. What we have is what is called the I vector, and we also have something that is called the J vector. The I vector is going to have a direction that is in the positive x-axis direction, and it is going to have a magnitude of 1. The J vector is going to have a direction in the positive y direction, and it is also going to have a magnitude of 1. So if we go ahead and take a look at what this looks like on the xy coordinate plane, this is the I vector here. Notice that it's in the positive x direction, okay, magnitude of 1. Here is the J vector, which is in the direction of the positive y axis, but also with a magnitude of 1. Now, what's the advantage of this? Well, if we go ahead and start, say, for example, with point O, which is the origin, and we go to the value of A, which is 2, 1, then what I can do is I can actually go ahead and represent this vector, OA, in terms of the basis vectors i and j, using a linear combination of i and j. So if we were to just go ahead and take a look at this example here, what I have is I have two i vectors. Okay, let's go ahead and show that. Here are my two i vectors. And here is my one j vector. So here is my j vector. So notice then that the linear combination of i and j of 2i plus 1, 1j, <laughs> excuse me, 1j, <coughs> is going to give me what is called the component form of this particular vector, o to a. <clears throat> now what I'm hoping that you recognize as well is that given any two points, any two points on the xy coordinate plane, you can always come out with a linear combination of ing vectors so that you can determine what that component form will be for that particular vector. Okay? Now, there's also going to be a very shorthand form of the component linear combination of the component form of the vector, and it's going to be the column form. Now, I think that it's going to be very obvious just by looking at what we have here and here it's going to be obvious as to how you go ahead and transfer to the column form here. Okay? So what we have then is these are going to be all the i vectors and these are going to be all the j vectors okay? that make up this particular vector, OA. Okay, and so there you go. That's what we're going to be looking at. Now, we're going to also take a look at a little bit more in depth as to how we can go ahead and use the component form or the column form of the vector, work with those operations, and also show how it is consistent with its geometric interpretation as well. Okay, so there you go. We are looking now at, in addition to addition, we're looking at scalar multiplication, which was based upon addition. Noticing that we still come out with a vector as a result. Scalar multiplication only affects the magnitude, okay? And it's also only gonna affect the direction by either keeping the direction the same or having the exact opposite direction. And then we're going to take a look at two different ways that we can now go ahead and talk, of, and talk about vectors. One is the linear combination of vectors, which is also called the component form of a vector, which can also be rewritten as the column form of a vector. But those vectors are all based upon the basis vectors i and j. Okay, so there you go. We'll take a look at how to work with scalar multiplication as well as with either the component form or the column form of vectors and see how that relates to its geometric, geometrical uh, representations as well. Okay, so we'll see you in class. See you later. Bye-bye.